All right, welcome back to Nanaliza Done. I remain your host, Chad of Fury333, and now we will have what appears to be the tiebreaker between RAR and Orphelius in what I guess was a series. Orphelius just requested these three games. I don't know for sure that this is actually a contiguous series of games, but these are in order of being played. The last game is going to be on Icy Shell, and I was wondering last at the end of the last match what RAR would be doing. Well, it looks like they're going to be going for light vehicles. And they're going to be going in the corner of the map. So, very much corner position. Orphelius, center rushing with cloaky bots. I'm sensing a warrior rush. And I am right. Called it out of the gate. Okay, warrior rush. Orphelius really wants to test out the buffed up warriors. And Rar going for immediate leveler. I guess they expect very quick raiders. And the use of the warrior is going to be interesting. Warriors and levelers, I would kind of just put it on cost. I don't really know that either one really counters the other, so basically you just be numbers. They cost roughly the same. The only advantage leveler has... Actually, the speed isn't even that big of a difference. It's, I think, a few Elmo per second, maybe. Yeah, like, a 15 Elmo per second difference in speed. And in terms of damage... Well, essentially it's going to be a matter of whether or not Warrior can get in range and not die. Although, 290 compared to, what was it, 280? Yeah, the range is about the same. Warriors and levelers are pretty much on par, but I think warriors would probably win just for the higher DPS. Then that's about the only that's the only difference between them right now is the higher DPS, and I guess also the fact that they fire much more frequently, which helps a ton. So Orphelius right now has a center expansion, has a really risky position. If Rar had gone for Scorchers instead of Levelers. Well, actually, okay, the Warriors would have helped against that. But for the most part, if they'd gone for scores instead of levelers, they could have avoided the Warriors and just harassed everywhere because there are no defenses. Orphilius is pretty much focused entirely on the center. They have nothing over the south except for the worker itself. While Rar, if they had Scorchers, they'd have four or five by now. And yeah, the Warrior would be a problem. No doubt about it. Everything else would be dead. And actually, even the Warriors would have... I mean, they'd be a problem, but I'm not entirely sure. 800 health against the Scorcher. I mean, Scorchers can get rid of that much health probably about the time it would take for them to die. Like, Warriors are... Because they're a machine gun-based thing, because they... they're riots because they fire quickly and because they have a bit of splash damage, whereas Levelers are riots because they hit hard in one shot. And even they have a hard time with the Scorchers, but... Yeah, single Warriors would probably not do super well against Scorchers. Like, I'd expect them to go down to about three or four... Like, three or four Scorchers should take out a Warrior. Mind you, that is also twice the cost. But I haven't really tested it. You don't see Warriors used much in the Light Vehicle, in the Cloaky Light Vehicle matchup. That is a rare choice. But I think Orphelius just... Are they trying to go for... They're not trying to go for a Rush. I was half right. Starting with Warrior, but not with a Rush. And Orphelius, they have the radar. They've got to be aware... Yeah, they're totally aware these Levelers are here. While Rar, on the other hand, they're aware of sort of what's going on. They have some radar. They're aware that Orphelius has taken the center, which kind of stands to reason. But aren't really aware of anything else. And the Warriors moving forward. Now, two Warriors are, or at least were, fairly handy at dealing with a commander. But against an upgraded commander with a machine gun itself and the Slashers, I wouldn't have much confidence. I really would not hold out hope. And Orphelius' commander slowly trying to do... Uh, it's not going to deal with the levelers. Why are you pushing the commander to the levelers? And, ah, here we go. This is where the warriors shine. Slash is getting way too close for comfort. Rar being forced back. The commander probably going to die? Maybe going to die? Definitely going to die. There goes the commander. Taken out by the two warriors. Did exactly what it needed to do. That was perfect. I mean, mostly that was just taking advantage of the terrain here, because this terrain, that can't be seen past from the slasher. That can't be really seen over. But the Warriors just use the cusp, use the lip of that crater. Very cleverly done there. Really respect that. I mean, speaking of someone who really enjoys the Spider Factory, and the Spider Factory has a huge amount of power from doing just that, yeah. I like that. I enjoyed watching that happen. And now Rar's army compl almost completely destroyed. Still has the slashers. And these Zeus's are fairly weak. But the levelers are also right there. Sorry, the slashers are also right there. I'm completely losing my words here. Zeus's are here. Some are damaged. Slashers are here to deal with it. Orphilus's commander appears to be upgraded as well. With the flame. 
flamethrower. Man, people are experimenting left, right, and center when it comes to the dynamic commander system, which is actually exactly what it should do. Which is awesome. And Bar continuing with a slasher push. I agree against the Zeus's. We do see Orpheus going for the Glaives. Two Glaives will not do the trick. The Slashers will be able to take care of them without much issue. Like, some issue. Enough issue that for cost it is a problem, but still. Two Glaives against a couple Slashers. Not the easiest choice. Not the easiest counter. But these things are expensive. Yeah, like, against... Two slashers, about four glaives is for cost, and I think three or four would deal with... It's just slashers, because of their range, have a lot of power. That's the thing you gotta deal with, is the range. Glaives can kind of cut through the range. Zeus can sort of as well, but then slashers can just retreat and not really care. And the warrior normally deals with that. The only reason it didn't hear was because Orphelius was really clever about when they popped the warrior over the cliff. Like, the warrior went over the top at the exact right moment. And it almost looked like Ra was actually trying to snipe the warriors from just riding up the cliff. Because this is not vehicle passable, I should point out. This here, this is totally impassable to vehicles. But the vehicles can kind of hug the edge of that lip there. And that's what those slashers were trying to do in their last moments. Before they failed utterly at defending their commander. Still, the, bizarre, the inexplicably autonomous armies of Ra go on. Yet, I don't really know what... More is going to happen here. I mean, really, it's just... Rar, once again, low in energy. That seems to be a running theme as well. But yeah, the Slasher's not really able to do too much. Rar realizes this, throws in the towel. Not even a GG. Just quits. And that was that. Best of three series, apparently, between Rar and Orphelius. So, I guess, well done to Orphelius. But that was a good series, especially Game 2. Game 2, I'm going to be putting in the Masterclass playlist, because that one is a really good educational game on how to deal with that sort of cheese rush, because RAR does that a fair amount. It's not a, it's not a weak rush, but it is cheese. No doubt about it, it is cheese. Or at least it's somewhat cheesy. It's not totally cheesy. Commanders are not that illegitimate. But that kind of defender rush, that kind of def just pork rush in general, that's pretty cheesy. But dealing with that is an important skill to learn, and that's something that's going to be right front and center on the YouTube channel. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, and... ...to actually know what the heck it's doing. Alright, 7.30. Ooh, hey! I have time. I can do a game. So I'm going to be back with a first-person video. Google Frog was really itching to play me, so I will play Google Frog. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.